Hi there, I'm Donna Wolf from Nastasia.com. Today, I'll show you how to crochet this kitchen towel with a topper. These crochet towels have a lot of texture in them and work up fast and easy. To do this, I'm using a total of 180 yards of worsted weight cotton yarn and a size G crochet hook. To begin, make a slip knot and then chain 46. Begin by skipping the first chain and making a single crochet in the next chain. We'll be eliminating chains along the sides and doing an alternative to the chain 3 for double crochet rows. Then make another single crochet in the side of the first one. That kind of looks like a nice double crochet stitch and eliminates the need for a chain 3. Now, in the rest of the starting chain, we'll just make one double crochet stitch in each chain across. This is forming the bottom edge of the crocheted towel. I'm making stripes of colors in mine, but feel free to make this entire towel part just one color. At the end of this row, we'll have 45 stitches on it. For row 2, we'll do the alternative to the chain 3. Lift your loop a bit, then single crochet, and single crochet in the side of that previous single crochet. Now, for some texture, we'll do a single crochet stitch, then follow that with a double crochet stitch, and then we'll repeat with a single crochet in the next stitch, and a double crochet in the next stitch. Keep alternating single crochet and double crochet stitches all along this row. And that's our completed row 2. We end this row with a double crochet stitch. We should still have 45 stitches on it. Now it's up to you, but for row 3, I'm changing over to the green yarn to create stripes along the bottom edge of my towel, but you can continue with using the red yarn instead if you wish. We'll begin this row with that alternative chain 3 again, since it looks like and counts as a double crochet stitch. And for the remainder of row 3, we'll just make one double crochet in each stitch across. If you are still counting, you'll have made 45 stitches on this row, which of course includes that initial alternative chain 3 stitch. As we move along to row 4 now, we'll start with that alternative chain 3 stitch pattern again. And on this row, we'll do that other textured pattern again. This time, we'll alternate single crochet stitches, then a double crochet stitch, followed by a single crochet stitch, and a double crochet stitch. We'll end this row with a double crochet stitch. And again, on every row, for the lower section of the crocheted towel, we'll have 45 stitches. I'm changing to a beige yarn for the main section of my towel. So for row 5, we'll begin with the alternative chain 3. And on this row, we'll just do one double crochet in each stitch across. This helps prepare us for that very textured brick-like stitch pattern coming up in the next row for the main section of the towel. It's a good idea to measure your work. Mine is about 12 inches wide, but it's okay if yours is an inch more or less than my sample. For row 6, the very textured pattern begins. We'll start with an alternative chain 3 again. That counts as the first double crochet. In the next stitch, we'll do a front post double crochet stitch. Insert your hook this way around the previous row's stitch. Then proceed to do a normal double crochet stitch. And in the next stitch, we'll do another front post double crochet stitch. Insert the hook like this around the post of the previous row's stitch. Then finish the normal double crochet way. Technically, that's three stitches we just made. We'll be working in groups of three for this row. The next set of three stitches, we'll be making back post double crochet stitches. Insert your hook this way from the back. You can see how it looks different than our previous front post stitches. We'll make our yarn over and draw our loop through the stitch as we normally would do with a double crochet stitch. Then we'll do another yarn over and finish like a double crochet stitch. And again, insert the hook like this from the back of the work. We'll make our yarn over and draw our loop through the stitch as we normally would do with a double crochet stitch and finish the stitch like a normal double crochet stitch. And a third time like this entering the hook from the back around the post of the stitch and finish the double crochet stitch. Then our next three stitches will all be front post double crochet stitches. So do the next three stitches as front post stitches. One thing with post stitches, I do try to draw up my loops a bit so they don't curl over the stitches. 
Then our next three stitches will be those back post double crochet stitches again. So do the next three stitches as back post stitches, entering the hook from the back and around the post of each of the stitches. Continue alternating three front post stitches and then three back post stitches across the row. Then on the last three stitches, just make the first two stitches as front post double crochet stitches. Then the very last stitch will do a normal double crochet in the top of the last stitch. This is primarily done because it's sort of difficult to do a front or back post stitch around the last stitch in a row, at least in this pattern. Now for rows 7 through 22, we'll repeat what we just did on row 6. Start with the alternative chain 3. Then the next two stitches are front post double crochet stitches. Since the first stitch we made was the alternative double crochet, we'll insert our hook around the front post of the previous row stitches to create our front post double crochet stitches. There's our first three stitches of this row. Then we do the next three stitches as back post double crochet stitches. So insert your hook from the back and around the previous row stitches like this. Then we follow that by making three front post double crochet stitches, entering our hook from the front and around the previous row stitches. You can see the nice brick-like texture that is starting to form in the main part of my towel. As mentioned before, feel free to use the same color yarn right from the start instead of doing the stripes like I did in my work. At the end, as before, do the first two stitches as front post double crochet stitches. Then in the last stitch, just place a normal double crochet stitch at the top of the previous row's last stitch. And as a reminder, we'll do this pattern from row 7 through row 22. You can see the first two red rows, then two green rows, then rows 7 through 22 in beige. Then for row 23, I did just double crochet with green. Row 24, I did the alternating single crochet and double crochet. And row 25, I did a red row of just double crochet. Let's move on to row 26 at this time. We'll begin row 26 with our alternative chain 3, which will count as a double crochet stitch. And on this row, we want the top to gather. So we'll be skipping stitches to cinch our work at the top slowly. We'll first skip one stitch and make a double crochet in the next stitch. Skip a stitch then make a double crochet in the next stitch. And again, skip a stitch and make double crochet in the next stitch. Continue with this pattern of skipping a stitch, then making a double crochet in the next stitch across the row. At the end, we'll skip a stitch and place our last double crochet in the last stitch of this row. You can see what the towel looks like at this time, and it should gather at the top and start to curl inwards at this time. That's perfectly normal and something we want it to do. For row 27, we'll begin this row with an alternative chain 3, as we have for just about every row. Then we'll just make one double crochet in each stitch across for this row. And you can see what this row and the towel topper part looks like thus far. You can see how we are continuing to gather the top section nicely so that the towel tapers evenly towards the handle part, which we will be crocheting shortly. Next, for row 28, start with the alternative chain 3 again. Then we'll gather the towel even more, which means skipping stitches so it curls inwards on us. Skip a stitch, then make a double crochet stitch in the next stitch. Continue with this pattern across the row. And then for rows 29 through 37, we're just going to do one double crochet stitch in each stitch across for a total of 12 stitches on each of the rows. And a reminder, we'll do this for rows 29 through 37. This forms the part that wraps the towel around a handle in the kitchen or even the bath. Next, for row 38, this forms the buttonhole for the topper. As always, the beginning alternative chain 3 counts as one double crochet stitch. Then over the next 4 stitches, we'll make one double crochet stitch. So I make the first double crochet, then the second one, third, 
and fourth double crochet stitches. After finishing the four double crochet stitches, next we'll make a chain two for the buttonhole section and we'll skip two stitches from the row below to make an even space. Then we'll finish this row by making one double crochet in each of the next five remaining stitches. You can see what this looks like once we've completed this row. The buttonhole should be in the center of the crocheted handle. And now for row 39, we'll start with the alternative chain three and make one double crochet in each of the next four stitches. There's our first, second, third, and fourth double crochet on this row. Then we're going to place two double crochet stitches in the chain two space from the row below, which form the buttonhole. We're basically adding just a row above the buttonhole to frame it nicely. Then we'll make one double crochet in each of the remaining five stitches on this row. Fasten off and weave in all ends. For the button, I use about an inch and a quarter button. I place my button around row 29, but you can place yours on whatever row you wish. I take a separate strand of yarn and use it to sew the button securely to the towel. I turn my towel topper over to ensure the button works correctly in the buttonhole. And that's pretty much it. That's how I crochet a kitchen towel with a topper.